talking about my children who also lost their dad. Eventually, I got two of my children who got a very serious depression, a very serious mental breakdown because they were so much attached to their dad. And everyone else was coming to me, sympathizing with me as a widow, but none of my people were thinking about my children. By the time I tussled it out to look for social workers, to look for counselors, to take these children to hospitals, to be given a deep counseling, it was almost getting late. So let's not look at some of the few, few things and leave something deep. Lastly, mental health is a social problem. We need to tackle it from a social perspective, I submit. Thank you so much. I think I can stand here. I just want to pick it from where Honor has ended. The microphone. As we talk about as we talk about social workers, I think it is also important to talk about parasocial workers because they reach out to the deepest of communities. And I'm happy that at least we have a critical mass of representatives from Minister of Gender, but also programs at the community level. So I wanted just to add that as a rejoinder. Uh, I also want to touch a bit about funding. Honorable Aisha talks about funding as one of them, but I think it is critical that we prioritize funding because many of the recommendations that charity has given, they touch a bit with funding. Even Honorable Margaret is talking about recruiting social workers. That is also about budgeting. So when you recruit them, how do we pay them? So I think it is important that as we talk about mental health and its associated challenges, we need to factor in a lot of funding prior prioritization. Uh, Dr. Mulimbra, we have talked about the mental health hour, but I think it is not seeming to be reaching to the grassroots of schools, communities yet. It is therefore important that you issue, I don't know if it is a directive or it is mainstreamed in the work plans for schools, such that as you go out to monitor using your different structures, this is one of the parameters to monitor to see if at all mental health hour is actually one of the things that is being honored in the different communities or schools. Uh, I think the report, the report is very exciting and Charlotte, I thank you because we are starting to talk about using evidence to engage. We need to widely disseminate the report beyond this committee to the wider audience so that people are able to know what are the findings in this. Lastly, uh, Franco, who is coming from my line ministry, is talking about prevention. I want to say that already SMU has rolled out a low-cost IPTG, the talk therapy. It is part of prevention but also response. So I want to think that we need to start the baby steps and be able to support them up until when you're able to really scale to other communities. And I thank you so much. My name is Gerald Ntale Kasula. I work for Mukobadi. I support USID ICA project for OVC. What, what is Mukobadi in full? Uh, Mukobadi is Mount Community Best Development Initiative. It's an NGO based in Busoga, but operating across the country. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Since uh, we are live, you can sit somewhere so that uh, there is a, a free seat. You can uh, you can have this seat here, where by where you will face the cameras. very much. I'm sorry. I am a, a bit disabled. It's okay. Don't but, apologize. Uh, I wanted to bring to the point that we shouldn't forget where we come from. And most of us in our cultures, we have a saying that who you are 
is what we were made from the beginning. And we have now, we are talking about ECD. I had my colleague talk about the cultural institutions, but most of these things are made out how you have empowered your children to cope with situations. Most of us are not talking with our children. And today, as I tell you, in Butavika there is a special ward for children who are on drugs, who are mentally sick, and from rich families. And so what is the problem? Because we are talking of disadvantaged families and poor. These are not poor families, these are not what. But from the, when we went around, as a team that went around, we came and we included the mental health under the parenting manual, training manual, in Ministry of Gender, so that the parents would understand the signs and also prevent for their children to show. And you remember this came about in COVID, when parents couldn't cope with their children because of the situation. So we need, and also we are coming up with the national family policy, and one of the issues is the GB domestic violence. How can we ensure that families are healthy to produce healthy children or health community? So I would wish that mental health, as my predecessor, the assistant commissioner, children said, we need to see it together with the help of the committee and strong minds and other partners and develop a national strategy on prevention and response on mental health so that we, we tackle both the causes and the and the, in the effects, and we hold it together and agree on it and fund it. One, it may be funded on the science point of view because now the politicians are on science. But there are other effects on social that we may not tackle and science may not give a solution. So I feel one of the, when we were in Imbale, one of the children, if we were with us, and I think Chair was with us, the child talked about how he sees the parents fighting and it affects the child at school. So the teacher will not help in that one because we'll talk to the child, but the child goes back to the same environment. So I think we need to work together and ensure that we come up with a prevention and response strategy on mental health. Health will be overwhelmed. Instead of working on the communicable diseases, they will now start working on things that can be prevented. I thank you very much. Thank you so much for uh, for those recommendations. Yes, we are back this side. Let me <laughs> let me take from Grace, uh, Honorable uh, Doctor Hafsa. I will call you last as we get from the line ministries because we want us to get final comments from the line ministries and then strong minds. And then we can hear a summary of the recommendations. Okay. So Grace, uh, thank you, thank you so much, Doctor Kenneth. And I want to say thank you so much to all the previous people that have made comments. But most importantly, I want to say thank you to Charlotte and her team, Strong Minds, for doing such uh, great, amazing work. Uh, why am I saying this? Is because that uh, we have a lot of uh, gaps in regards to data and statistics when we start to speak about mental health. Everybody who speaks about mental health in Uganda speaks from speculations, speak from either experience or speak from hearsay or what they've Googled. And you know Google gives you anything without founded data, without statistics. So what Strong Mind has done today is a very good thing. And I want to say thank you very much, Strong Mind. And as coming from the perspective of the CSOs, I want to ask, have we ever had that government is disseminating a facts-finding report or a survey report or a research report on mental health? No. It's coming. Okay. But we will always hear there is a, like, I was seeing it on TV. Uh, my apologies before I say this. There was a, a presidential, what is it called? What was it called? A presidential core unit or something summit. Yes, that one, CEO Summit. Now, I'm trying to divert our attention towards what really matters for Uganda as a country. What is important for the stakeholders in this country? If we sit here, I am speaking coming from the perspective of the CSO, uh, the, the partners, and I'm the national coordinator for the Uganda National Mental Health Working Group. That's a platform that brings all the NGOs, 
all the CSOs together, including the different government ministries that are interested to join. We coordinate, we provide platform for collaboration, we share learnings, and we ensure that we keep advocating and encouraging community-based implementation of mental health now. CSOs have covered the gap in regards to providing community-based mental health. What is our responsible stakeholders, the government, doing? I want to appreciate Uganda Parliamentary Forum through the leadership of Honorable Macho. In the past two years, we have seen massive involvement of parliament in regards to mental health intentional decision to be involved in regards to mental health of Ugandans, including opening parliament for a whole one week mental health camp. That is something that has never happened in any place yet. Now, what are the other people doing? I'm very happy there's Minister of Health here, there is Minister of Education, there's Minister of Gender. What are we doing together as government ministries? Several times I get invited by Minister of Gender is doing a parallel you here. We are doing a review or structuring of a manual or we are coming up with psychosocial program to address the needs of children in school. And then before you know, Minister of Education is inviting you and they are trying to do a similar thing what Minister of Gender has also done. And then you come back to our dear Dr. Afsa, Minister of Health, and they're also trying to say, we need to come up with a comprehensive way of how we can ad address mental health in the country. What is it that is stopping these respective under ministries that are responsible for addressing the mental health of Ugandans from working together and ensuring that we come with a national strategic focus that addresses the mental health of Ugandans? Because it is our responsibilities. And we need to do this. And we cannot keep sitting and waiting for civil societies to be doing what Strong Mind did. We are sitting in this room, Chair, through you, we are discussing this report, what is going to be next. Shall we have the recommendation implemented? Strong Mind has invested funds and resources into this. Are we going to leave this just by discussion in this room, the, the different legislators that are here? You know, for us civil societies, we don't forget. If you make political statement, we stick to it. About a month ago, we were promised that we will be given one billion for national st studies to do a national study on the prevalence of mental health. We have it stuck in our head, and we are going to follow that. In May, we had the prime minister speak and made commitment that they are going to ensure that the budget allocation to mental health is increased from 1% to 5%. We are going to follow that, and we stick to that. When we were in the compound of parliament, Honorable Macho was there. The right Honorable Speaker made a commitment and a pledge to supporting the plea of partners in regards to addressing the mental health of Ugandans. As I conclude, I would like to call upon the different under ministries, the different government stakeholders, Civil societies are doing their part in, regard, in regards to working together, in regards to coordination and collaboration. But the bigger hand that can restrain us, that can avoid this fragmented report that is coming from this facts finding mission, is if we have a structured one national focus and discussion that comes together by all these different ministries to support civil society to be able to do their work by a well-regulated process Dr. Absa gave us the legal framework in regards to mental health in this country. I don't know if any of us get con got concerned. The bills are there, the policies are there, but they're all implemented. Did you hear her talk about implementation? There's no personalizing any of those. The adversary boards are appointed, they can't work because they need funds. For us, civil societies will give funds, but who is going to monitor their work? So let us, as we sit in this room, as responsible stakeholders, legislators are here, the different ministries are here. As we are going to implement the recommendations from this report, the cry from our civil society organization is that, can we have a coordinated, well-structured approach by the different government ministries so that we are not lost everywhere? And our consolidated effort can really support Ugandans. Thank you. Thank you so much, Grace. But, but quarreling is not allowed. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
all points noted, I think the Rafa has captured all of this. So we're getting from, we're going to hear from Honorable Batua, and then one more comment, and then I think we can sum up from the line ministries. Because time is not on our side. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair and colleagues. I'm Dr. Batua Timothy Rissala, uh, the Shadow Minister of Health and the Chairperson of the Uganda Parliamentary Forum on Malaria, a member on the committee, Parliamentary Committee on Health. Uh, a meeting of this nature is really very, very important. Uh, it bridges the knowledge gap between we, the legislators, who are really taxed, tasked with doing what you're asking to be done. You want government to do a certain kind of business. It is us to push government to do that kind of business. So any effort that is done in exclusion of us, that effort will bear less. So indeed, by you coming and us sitting on a round table and making us aware of what is really happening and what needs to be done, I think we are now closer uh, to putting it into effect. So in parliament, a member or a committee can move this business on the floor of parliament, a decision can be made, and government will be urged to put that in effect. And after a period of six months, government has to account, has to come back and inform us to what extent it has implemented uh, the request we put on table. So this is the right forum. I believe maybe in the past, the, the, the forum to which such information was being conveyed perhaps was not very effective in pushing government. But you're in the right place, and for uh, what you've put uh, ahead will be done. Good enough, there are members from various committees of parliament, and those are all avenues of bringing it into parliamentary business. I want to acknowledge that even the report informs us that one of the causes uh, of uh, you know, mental health issues are the drugs, the narcotics and psychotropic substances. Thankfully, as we speak now, we are the law regulating that, but that law has now been brought back to parliament. So we are reviewing it we are reviewing the law. So it's an opportunity, because for a law to be a very good law, it has to have two things. It has to have the effect and the force. So I want to know whether the various stakeholders looked at this law in particular to see whether the effect in this law is enough and the force in this law is also enough. Uh, by force, I really want to know whether a student in a particular school who is exposed to these substances, drugs, is really feeling obliged not to take those what? Not to take those drugs. When we say, or when we hang the law only on the police, that is the police to do this, it's the police to see for this, to look out for this, the law doesn't become so effective as it should. We want to know other players within the social life, within our social communities, who can have obligations within this law, either to report, you get it. There should be some form of uh, accountability in some of the leaders within the society to ensure that the law is effective. Then only uh, shall we have the effect of that law in deterring the various community members from indulging into drugs and psychotropic substances. Lastly, but not least, this I just want to put my view across. I'm not putting it as the Shadow Minister of Health. You know, Shadow Minister, you head the entire opposition on matters of health. So this, I will not say that it's our position, but this is my personal position as a politician and as somebody who has been around for a long time. Uh, I do not want to believe that uh, we compare or we start thinking about the economic benefit when we are dealing with some of these psychotropic substances, the narcotics and all that. 
I've never been convinced to think in terms of that. If you want to know how dangerous those substances are, in most of these African countries where they are doing military coups, yeah, military coups, in many cases, the youths are first fed with those drugs, such that they do not think no more. Even when you tell them that the other side they are armed people, they will still go there, whether with the sticks or stones or with nothing, but they will still charge towards those places. This was the case in Libya. You put multitudes of soldiers on the street you know, to scare the population, but the population has been fed with these products. You get it. So giving these people, or allowing people in the community to really take drugs is dangerous for everybody. You have a population that is youthful, that is unemployed, now making it even fearless to law enforcers is grave for the country. If you've been reading about Philippines, most especially at the time when the president was Rodrigo Duterte, I don't know whether you know what he did in that country, to reverse the country and get it out of that trend, you know, this was a country that was doing, you know, drugs. They thought that they would derive a lot of economic benefits from drugs, and it, it was a drug country for a long time. So to reverse it, he had to do a lot of killings. He had to, 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 to use a, a, a strategy that nobody on earth can really commend. So these are the extremes you go to at the time you want to reverse the country from the direction it has taken. It's really very dangerous. I've not really been convinced that even the regions that are doing that are rich regions. I see the same poverty I see elsewhere in those areas. You get it. And it's, it's, a, very, it's a very dangerous path. Personally, I would not even allow it to come into my constituency or my region. I can't. You get it. I can't. Not for one reason, not for two reasons. I can't. And most so if the benefit is economical. It's really very, very dangerous. And it's something as an individual... I would not support because I'm, I'm, I'm really convinced. Uh, but but uh, that I need to put across, that I need to put across that we are already a very poor country. So on top of our issues of poverty, if we add that, we shall become insecure on top of being a poor country. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable, for, for those very valuable comments. So we have one yes. more. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, honorable members, my name is Alvin Mwezi. I work for IMPACT, Innovation Program for Community Transformation, which is one of uh, Strong Minds partners. I want to just recognize uh, Mr. Honorable Kubekiterio, who was my teacher in Mwiri several years ago. So it's good to be um, here um, with you. Um, my quick submission in the interest of time is that... Uh, I want us to first commend ourselves for this multi-sector coordination. Uh, yesterday I was in another event and the concern raised was that actually coalitions and coordinations at, at development level are weakening. Uh, if you look at NGOs, for example, that were formed as alliances or networks, many are significantly weakening or have gone under. So the fact that we have a representation of different sectors here is not something we can take for granted. It seems to be very strong at the uh, national level, and maybe the challenge now, based on the feedback from the fact-finding report, is that we need to strengthen it at local government level. Um, my last point is also to urge us to also consider how we can engage the private sector. There is a strong link between economic deprivation and, uh, and mental health. We know that the private sector, in in their different capacities. I don't know how we can bring them together, uh, up the primary employers. And so it would be beneficial that we have them also participate in these engagements. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I think we've, <clears throat> we've had almost all the comments and recommendations. I hope our repertoire is, 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 uh, is noting them. We shall shortly ask you to, to just read a summary of the recommendations you've captured from, uh, from these discussions. At this point, I know many recommendations and comments have been uh, made, but uh, cutting across the different line ministries, particularly Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, 
and Ministry uh, of Gender. So at this point, I would invite uh, Minister of Health and then Education and Gender to make comments uh, basing on the, the discussions and uh, some of the way forwards that have been uh, recommended. And uh, just make a few comments here and then see what's possible and what's not possible as uh, the repertoire furnishes up her way forward. So over to you, Dr. Hafsa. Hmm? Thank you very much, Dr. Kenneth. Uh, he was talking about the rapporteur, not Dr. Batua. <laughs> to thank you uh, but uh, yes my, my what I'm what I'm getting out of this and my comments to whatever has been said I think I have about four I'll talk about them in four ways in four different um, ways the first one is about this is something that we've been crying for and I'm glad it's coming out and it is something we need to do one of the ways we are trying to do this to ensure that this happens is uh, we have developed the interministerial uh, working group on mental health. Uh, we had a meeting, one of our meetings last week, and uh, we are trying to see to develop the terms of reference for that working group. We don't know how far we'll go, but we think that it will help us uh, get to some point. We need to have a concerted effort to work on mental health. And uh, one thing that we uh, I should emphasize is the fact that we need to take on the whole of life. We should not talk only about adults or those that are sick. We should talk about everyone. Those children when they are, when they are still in the wombs of their mothers, you know, the pregnant woman. We need to talk about the woman but also the baby in there, you know. And all throughout, you know, as the, the early childhood development as we know it, the adolescents and so on and, you know, everyone has to get into into the picture. Otherwise, if we leave out one sector, that's where the problem will, will arise. So we really need to do something in that respect. I wanted to just um, add my voice to what uh, Honorable Margaret was saying about uh, people caring many, more for the adults, and especially when they are, you know, the high end. Eh? They would, people would tend to take care of those ones and leave out the children. I want to give the story because I was part of the, the group that went out. Uh, it will be short. One of the children we found who was troubled in, uh, in Mbali, this child was crying, he had failed to cope, you know, he was having really big issues. The reason was his father had been diagnosed with TB and he thought he was going to die. So his problem was he was going to drop out of school and yet he was doing very well. So that was the child's problem. What does this mean? It just means that the people who came to test the child, I mean the parents in their home, did not talk to the children, did not tell them what it means for their dad to be sick, you know? And yet it is something that could be done. You know, you cancel the person who is sick, you cancel their family. And people can be able to bring out whatever problems they're having. The children have very funny questions. Whatever sport you enjoy, Sport Action on NBS Sport has you covered. Whether you want to support the Uganda Cranes or our netball team, golf or athletics, both domestic sporting events in Uganda and international sporting events in which Ugandans compete are the subjects of our attention. What are you still holding out for? Catch all the excitement on Sport Action by tuning to NBS Sport, brought to you by MDN, the number one supporter of Ugandan sports. Better steady, be better. There are many tricks frauds has used to uh, uh, defraud uh, unsuspecting customers. But what you need to know is you're the first line of defense. So we strongly encourage you to uh, call your bank whenever uh, you lose your phone. We strongly encourage you not to disclose your PIN to anyone. 
protect uh, your ATM card and don't expose in our schools and the immediate heart issue uh, is such a to guide our schools on how to handle these cases. And I want to report, yes, we could be having one, two isolated incidents, but I think the situation has yet to come down. So uh, the ministry is doing that. Two, we are now looking at our aims. And the discussion has been held to have indicators in our aims so that we can now capture data on this specific issue, the mental health aspect. And that's another thing which is done. We are training teachers. But of course, in the isolated case, in the isolated case we go to schools, to train teachers here. So we don't have that program that is well coordinated and looking at all the schools. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, as a ministry, as a ministry, we, 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 we want to seek your support and guidance. Because uh, we have a structure gap, which was able to put up by Honorable Ayubali. And I was happy it came out here. And I was happy because these issues are ca happening here uh, with the people who take critical decisions. We have a structure gap. I've mentioned the numbers that in our educational institutions. And uh, there's nobody really to care and help our children out of the stress, the many psychosocial challenges they are facing, which many of them, like they were right to put, originate from the families, as a result of domestic violence and other pressures. But we don't have structurally, we don't have a provision for an officer in a school, at school level, who can support our learners who may have challenges of psychosocial nature and even stress. So when she comes here, and uh, my chair here knows because there has been another space where we have been recruiting for schools, but we have never had a provision to recruit, for example, a counselor, a social worker, like somebody put it, so that is part of the school and is able to support our learners. Remember, some of the schools that we are mentioning have got more than 2,000 learners. That's a very big number. I'm cared for in terms of social, uh, psychosocial support. So what do you expect? Even the girls we are talking about, if we had somebody here to counsel, to guide, it would happen. During our time, uh, I think many of you are falling into the evening hours, we used to have uh, uh, careers, teachers, counselors at that uh, point. But now, we don't have. And we need to recruit somebody to specifically support our, our children. We live alone having, like we have been struggling. Every school in terms of structure is supposed to have a medical worker, a nurse. But we don't have. And why? Because of the budget. And it was, uh, I think, mentioned. But I think uh, the, 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 uh, the minister for Yes, uh, the shadow minister uh, for, for, for anything. So we, we really need to provide a budget so that we have uh, this personnel in schools to really support our people, considering the kind of the, the, the numbers that we have in our education institutions. So uh, members, uh, that's what I needed to maybe add on, but all the issues have been raised and picked those we can manage, I think we can. Those we can't, we seek your support so that we can. It is a, a much sexual kind of. And uh, for us, we say education is a collective responsibility. This business of saying means of education may not really address the issue. So we need to work as, as a, a team to confront this monster. If you go to our school, there are many cases you hear of bullying, of what, Maybe as a result of what? Mental issues, psychosocial 
issues. So we need you to come out and uh, support the ministry and support the schools. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. But before we go off, we, from this side, we hear that there was a directive to, to deploy counselors in schools. Is, uh, is that true or just a rumor? There, there was a proposal. Okay which we, we are trying to uh, fast track because the cabinet had to make a decision over this. Okay. So it has not been decided yet, and we don't have that slot in our structure. Okay, so but the structure we are is pushing it. With your support, I hope it will be. If uh, my chair, uh, parliamentary forum can raise his voice and my chair here, I think maybe it can move. It can move. Maybe to, clari to clarify on that, uh, such decisions, even when they go to cabinet, they finally come to parliament for endorsement and may to be allocated resources. So what this meeting has, uh, has achieved is a, a panya. I think it's called a shortcut. So you've come directly uh, to us, so we now have a duty uh, to put it on the floor of parliament and speak convincingly because you've given us good information, and once a decision is taken, then at the time of the ministerial policy statements, when the ministries bring their statements for budget allocations, at that time, such issues can be made sure that they're incorporated in the budget. Thank you, thank you. Chair, yeah, maybe for, for information or clarification, we can maybe bring it as a way of question, as a follow-up, because in the main motion mentioned, it was one of the issues, yes, that the education uh, ministry streamlines, mainstreams studies to health into education by having counselors in schools to attend to, to children. So we could ask the minister how far they've gone so that the minister commits himself. From there then the minister would be able to take it up. For us, I think the support we can give at this time, when they budget, we shall support that, that arrangement. I think that's when it will come at our end, because we cannot support any matter that has financial implications if it has not been proposed to us by executive. So it has to come from that end. So we can bring a question on the floor of parliament for the minister to make a comment. Yeah, so, yeah. okay. So, Minister of Gender. Yes, uh, Mr. Tolia, Franco, you can, can come and sit here, too. Okay. okay. I want to appreciate this forum so, so much that... Uh, we have escalated the discussion on mental health to this level now. I want to appreciate strong minds for this, that they have brought us to this level now to discuss strategical issues of mental health. The honorable members and colleagues who are present here, the under NDP3, Government prioritized human capital development, community mobilization and mindset change, among others. And uh, we cannot talk about human capital if the human capital we are talking about is not mentally right. Uh, so uh, we cannot develop the appropriate skills and knowledge that we need if the mental health is not working. So I think I'm trying to see that this mental health we're talking about is an issue of human capital development and mindset change and no community mobilization and mindset change. Chair, under that arrangement again, the working in silos is now avoided under program-based planning and budgeting. And most of the stakeholders are here. Those who are the the ministries, departments, and agencies which are under the human capital development, community mobilization, and mindset change are directly targeted. They are the key stakeholders in this issue of mental health. Therefore, I think as my proposal and most of you have agreed 
that we need the strategy, a national strategy, which should be costed with its res uh, uh, resource implications, with very clear M and E frameworks, so that we have we track the impact that we are doing. Because a lot of work is being done, but we don't know who is doing what. The, the other chairperson, this is the national coordinator for the what? She said sometimes you find the activities are being done, Minister of Health is doing the same thing that the Minister of Gender is doing. Our mandate is for children and youth out of school. So we, we need that coordination. We need that strategy to avoid some of these uncoordinated troop movements. So the, the Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development, as you said, is concerned because the, the youth and the children who are the greatest victim of the drug abuse and the substance abuse you are talking about are within the, the core mandate of the Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development. We are trying to do something in the areas of uh, family strengthening interventions, with the parenting sessions, strengthening systems for child protection at all levels, district and sub-county levels, but still this is just a drop of water in the ocean. So we need more. A lot is being done, but more needs to be done. So I think for me, I will be the starting point is we need that strategy. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Tolo. But before you go off, <coughs> uh, parenting, I think, has come out from uh, as a major factor here. In, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, uh, you have the parenting guidelines of the yes, Minister yes. of Gender. Yes. Do you need any help in terms of dissemination and, 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 and Definitely, we need, of this we need a lot. The lot. We need that uh, support, financial, especially that uh, we the, the parenting sessions should be organized, even at a strategic level. We have the problem here is in Uganda now. We have very many fathers, but few parents. So we we need to roll out these sessions, even for us here. So we need your support in terms of budgeting and funding. I look forward to come next appropriating appropriation sessions that you people say like the other time you told us no budget for member health, no approval of all budgets. For us we want those type of things. No money for child protection, no approval of budget. We want that level of support from you really. Yes. Your very center and key in this I, I think you you need to make a, a very formal call that the honorable members of parliament can have something tangible to pick up on. Because uh, situations are changing, children, parents are being busy, and uh, schools are also changing. It's difficult to parent with the, with the, with the difficult socioeconomic or changing socioeconomic circumstances. So those parenting guidelines, we need them and they need to be disseminated. I think as, as a ministry, you just need to find a way of, you know, making a formal call, and then the house here will see how to, to support you, if it is funds. And Thank you. Just to supplement your statement, I think gender, your core mandate is the wellness of this child. I think so. Yes. Whereas we are putting it to, to education, to put in the social workers, but I think it is actually your core mandate. We've gone to schools and found that many children actually they have fears as a result of uh, sexual abuse of relatives in their homes, uncles and fathers. I have a school I visited and they gave children to write the stories they have at their hand, heart and they're fearing to share. And the children wrote, several of them wrote that they had been sexually abused and the abuse had threatened to kill them in case they ever spoke out. So such a child is dying with such a thing. So I think whereas we are pushing the Ministry of Education, it would actually be your ministry trying so hard to work with education to ensure that the wellness of this, this child is achieved right from home, even in the schools. Because the, many of the problems start from, school, from, from home, then end in school, and eventually pour into the society. Thanks so much. That's a rejoinder to what is saying, Chair. That's a rejoinder. We have the National Child Policy 2020 in place. That National Child Policy actually talks about, as you say, honorable child well-being. 
and it, uh, we, that policy talks of the whole of government approach. There are five pillars in that policy. It doesn't only that, that those five policies brings every ministry department on board on issues of child well-being. We no longer talk of child protection. We talk of child well-being. Every child is vulnerable, including mine and yours. So there are five pillars. We have a pillar on survival and health. We have a pillar on development and education. We have a pillar on child care and protection. We have a pillar on child participation, the last one on system strengthening. And all these have technical working groups. Under the pillar of education and development, we have a technical working group which is chaired by Minister of Education. And whenever we go to disseminate the national child policy in, in local governments, we go with the representatives from Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Internal Affairs, because that policy talks of the whole of government. So your observation is quick, because in those interventions you see the family, as you said, in the issue of child care and protection, the family as the first line that the policy targets. It's true. Okay, thank you so much. Felista, and then uh, as uh, you, as strong minds. Hey, okay. <laughs> hey, okay, that. <laughs> Under the Department of Guidance and Counseling, we have five components. One, career guidance. Two, mental health and so psychosocial aspect. Three, we have educational aspect. Four, we have um, the moral, which is spiritual. And five is um, mental, social, educational, more spiritual. And then we have the aspect of uh, guidance career guidance that is i've forgotten the other one so in that case the counselor must have aspects of education to guide on career then also the issue of emotional psychological actual emotional which covers mental then social aspect where they would work with a social worker in the community so we should not mix the two and say that the social worker in the community is better than the counselor in the school so that's why we are calling upon you to support us so that we have these trained counselors. Train, not just a council of certificate, a diploma and above. Thank you. Thank you so much, Felista, for, for that addition. At this point now, I invite our strong minds to, to give a summary of the way forward you've captured. And then I'll invite the chair to... Yes, so she, she will summarize from the many that she's going to, to present, and then we see which ones Parliament can pick up from. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Once more, my name is Makile Tagedo. We have a few recommendations that have come out clearly. Uh, one of them is uh, we need to focus on prevention approaches and not just response in terms of mental health. And then we've also recommended 
that we bring on board local governments to be part of these discussions because at the end of the day there are people who interact a lot with our communities and then we also recommended a strategy which is targeting different age groups so far we seem to be like a uh, more of attending to particular groups but some groups are not attended to so there was need to have a targeted approach and then there's also a recommendation to work with the artists creative art in terms of creating awareness around mental health as we are programming we did that and then it has also come clearly the need to strengthen the ngo coalition around the area of mental health and then we have recommended that we introduce approaches which push for family values as we do our programming and then we've also recommended that internal affairs is brought on board to be part of these discussions and then the issue of introducing social workers in the public service particularly in the ministry of <coughs> education as a structure there is need for that and then there's also need to prioritize funding towards mental health and particularly a fund going towards education but also rich research on mental health by the Ministry of Education and we have also agreed the need for a national strategy on <coughs> prevention and response to mental health and then recommended for a mass sectoral approach for mental health. Uh, for the Ministry of Education or has also the Minister of Health did re request that when the second reading of the two bills, there is a bill on alcohol and control, and then there is one on substance and psychotic control, I, think, I hope I captured the right words, that uh, they would need support from Parliament. <laughs> okay, then I will correct that. They, they would require support from the parliamentarians to support around that. And then the structure for councillors, for the Ministry of Education, the structure for councillors should be provided for in schools. That also came out clearly. Okay. Then Parliament, also another way forward was for Parliament to, when the Ministry of Education during the time of reading out the interministerial positions, to push or to ask how far the introduction of these structures has happened. That is what we had in terms of the way forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, much late for, for the summary. This point is here from Parliament. The summary way forwards and recommendation, basing on the discussions we've had. Sorry, sorry, Chair, to... I, I just wanted to be clear. We are talking now about national strategy. But where do we, uh, which ministry do we assign this? Are we leaving it to parliament? Or there should be a ministry which is uh, leading on this? Otherwise, when we say national strategy, who is going to be responsible? Whom are we going to ask if it is not in place? I just wanted to be clear on that point. Thank you, Chair. Health, I think the, it will be led by health, but we already have an intersexual committee, and I think these discussions will continue to happen outside this, this room. Yeah, we are we, we're forming an intersex interministerial committee on mental health, and we shall have all the line ministries and other development partners included. And in there, we shall have a discussion and agree on this will be part of the, the discussions as well. Then we bring it back to, for support to, to, for, to, to our members of parliament. Sure, I think the point. last point is not being well captured. The issue was not to ask a question at that time of policy statement. No, to bring an independent question to the minister to explain to us how they've been able to integrate matters of mental health into government programs. But I remember what, what, what um, the forum desired is that mental health be taken as an independent program. Now we are talking about integrating. We need clarity. What do we need? Do we advocate for mental health being as a, pro a program 
do you have 18 programs? So there was, there was interest of having it as an independent program, but there's also, also an argument of now having it integrated into the program. They don't know what the difference. They can explain to us, the technical people, what they, they think is best for us, and that's what we should push. So the other issue was, the, the matter was to ask a question to the minister to explain to us how far they've gone into implementing the motion or the recommendation that we have put forward. But on this other matter, whether we have a program or we push for integration, we ca you can help us get to know, give us direction. We, we need to conclude, yes. Honorable Chair, there is something little I want to guide this meeting. Uh, when we are talking about, so to take you back, it, it is in regard to Dr. Hafsa. When you are talking about uh, cannabis, we are talking about medical hemp. We are talking about cannabis of medical benefits. And no, they, they are not the same. No. Because we have Dr. Hafsa, your medical officer, and you trained very well. And you have morphine that you give cancer patients. You have malino that stops nausea from uh, people with cancer who have nausea and whatever. You have those drugs that we give, even tramadol. You have, you have them. So we are talking about medical hemp, cannabis. We are not talking about these other uh, cannabis you grow for money for cows, for hens, for what, for these singers on the stage, for the singers on the stage. We are not talking about that. Honorable, your point is not for, 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 uh, uh, no, no. Honorable, no. your point is not that. So, it's what we are talking about. Your point is Thank not you. Okay, let's, let's listen to the summary now. Honorable, your point is not that. <laughs> Mr. Yes. Chairman, I think all has been covered. Uh, the issue of funding for mental health. Steady. Be better. Better steady. Be better. Woo! Bro, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able Even if it brings billions, that was the point I was driving at. That there is need for us to correct society and actually ensure that we should stamp out anything other than the economy. Yeah, actually, I, I think I'll have to, to immunize Honorable Kabanda along those lines when it comes to. Uh, of course, Waraj is worse, and uh, I don't take none of the above. So thank you very much. Two words don't make it right. Okay. <laughs> yes, at, at this point, thank you so much for the summary. And what we get here is that it's mostly regarding uh, uh, funding, and this engagement should continue. I think gender, education, with us health, we become regulars here. We meet these honorable members of parliament every now and then. But I think if we join and we come together, it makes more sense. Our, our efforts will be augmented and collaborated. So with that, I would like to invite, uh, through you, Chair, my Chair will hand it over this, uh, <laughs> this mic to you. I would like to invite uh, the Chair of the Parliamentary on the Forum, Param Parliamentary Committee on Mental Health. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, 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 Doctor. 
Hausa, Dr. Kenneth, my colleagues who are members of Uganda Parliamentary Forum on Mental Health, and very, very, very much strong minds uh, for having created for us a platform today to find and also to know that the journey you traveled, you saw, you discovered, and now we have at least noted the challenges and recommendations that will give us areas as parliament and as members of parliament to see where we can be of help to address the gaps that are concerning human health. Uh, every speaker spoke well. As a teacher, I would say everybody, if I was giving reports, passed in first grade and majorly Majorly, a report was very well detailed with facts and uh, with evidence. That is very good that I call upon other partners to follow suit so that we can have a lot of information concerning the mental health status of this country. Many times I keep saying that this is an area that lacks a lot of information. There are a few areas I noted that I think need our concern as members of parliament to address as quick as possible. When uh, 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 Dr. Hafsa really gave an outcry of why the alcoholic bill has taken long without coming back on floor of parliament so that we give it a summary as a good news to the people of this country. I call upon my colleagues that we should really talk to the mover and good enough our speaker, right honorable speaker, and it among is our patron. I believe she will strongly support us to make sure that we give Ugandans good news. Because many times I feel ashamed when we are called a country that is the highest alcoholic consuming within Africa, imagine, within Africa. But I believe so because whenever I'm in Ibsia, every weekend I see hundreds of Kenyan men crossing to come to Uganda to take cheap alcohol and go back with it in their stomachs to Kenya. And this has become, although an income generating activity to my people, but I believe we must brand Uganda in terms of that. Honorable colleagues, truly uh, the Tobacco Control Act is being implemented, but we have a lot desired too. It is being implemented, but we don't see hands on. We need hands on so that the law can be functional for people to control in this area. Ladies and gentlemen, the issue of cannabis is a big issue of discussion in this country. I think you have all who noted when even my good friend Joel said no. He has to twist the language. I don't know whether a voter talked to him or sent a WhatsApp or message <laughs> because he's not the, the, the Joel who was really talking. <laughs> the one I know. But however, I think it is a, a danger to this country that we should see how to protect our younger generation. Ladies and gentlemen, the findings are very good. And the question was, what next? What next? What next? And my sister, Honorable Isaac Avanda, really put emphasis that we should find a solution with the recommendations. Strong Minds and other partners who are here, I want to assure you that we are available to work together with you to address the challenges that are in our uh, 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 area of concern. We shall never leave issues of budgeting for mental health since that is our mandate. And, 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 and also advocacy. And at the same time, we call upon government to mainstream. I keep calling it Isa Kabanda's report, although it was a motion that she submitted on floor of parliament, because it was holistic and it addressed all sectors of life of our people in Uganda. Ladies and gentlemen, at the same time, I call upon other funders also to make sure that they touch other areas, majorly at grassroots level. I keep complaining that many times we have left mental health issues to 
in boardrooms and to be in the center of the city. But we need to move down to the grassroots. That's why you see in the report, almost most districts that we have visited were in the central. But however, it was good for, for Strong Mind to have that initiative because it was waited for long. It was waited for long, and since it has been done, that is very, very good. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, as a government, we should pray that an issue of drug shortage for people with mental illness should be addressed as quick as possible. Two days ago, I was seeing Dr. Naku, the executive director of Tabika Mental Health before the committee, and their, oh, her outcry was, please give us more money to buy the drugs for the people who are affected and infected with mental illness. illness. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, advocacy should be our key pillar to make sure that people know that mental health is a problem in this country. And that's why I request the government to permit the resident district the administrators, the, the RDCs, that the one hour that they gave them to talk about government policy, at least the 20 minutes should be given to talk about mental health issues in this country. Because this will help for our people to know that we have a problem. And at the same time, the, U, the UBC, Uganda Broadcasting Corporation, should also allow to give free airtime to advocates and civil society organizations and partners who are championing the issues of mental health in this country. I note well that Dr. Molindwa, in the Ministry of Education, their hands are tied on issue of recruiting educational counselors, but I think they are really needed. And as parliament, when we shall be submitting question to the ministers, we shall take this as a key area so that we can find a solution. Even if a school can have one counselor, but at least let us have, because cases of suicide in schools are really a problem to us. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank every participant who has come, and I want to thank majorly the Strong Minds for the good support for having allowed to come and work together with Uganda Parliamentary Forum on Mental Health, and I call upon other organizations and partners to follow suit, and the Dr. Hafsa and your team, I would, in the case I was in Ubusi, I would have said, Asante Sana, you are really committed to partners, and we shall work together. With those few remarks, I really want to close this meeting. Thank you. Thank you.